Hello, and welcome to another episode of Jazzology, presented by Savage Content. I'm your host, Willard Jenkins, and we're here alternating Fridays, giving two jazz fans the opportunity to compete against each other for a chance to win $100. Each contestant will be asked a question worth two points. If they are unable to answer correctly, their opponent will have the chance to steal the question. For one point, we will ask 10 questions, and at the end of the 10 questions, the person with the lowest score will get a bonus question for the opportunity to tie the score. If they're successful, the game will go to sudden death. Each contestant will take turns trying to answer the multiple choice questions until we have a winner. Let's meet this week's contestants. Our reigning champion from previous episodes is Mark Ruffin. Mark Ruffin is a jazz broadcaster, record producer, writer, and Grammy nominee. Mark is the program director and on-air host for Sirius XM's Real Jazz Channel. And he's the author of the highly entertaining 2020 book, Bebop Fairy Tales. Mark. Tell us a bit about your daily work in jazz broadcasting at Sirius XM. Like jazz, it has a lot of changes. Uh, things are different all the time. This month, we're doing um, Jazz Festival Month. Each weekend, we're highlighting a different jazz festival, e either they're physically or not. And this weekend is the start of our Labor Day Jazz Festival. I'm actually in Detroit. We're going to be broadcasting starting uh, tomorrow. and um, But we're playing music from the DC Jazz Fest from last year. And then we have Montclair the following week, Pittsburgh and White Plains uh, the following week. And then, Willard, I do believe the last week you and I will be in Monterey together. Absolutely. And I should, I should add that for those uh, longtime Jazzology listeners or viewers, uh, if my situation looks a little different in terms of my environment on this episode, it's because I am actually at DC Jazz Fest in my hotel room. <laughs> and, I'm in my, and I'm in my hotel room in Detroit. Yes. If you're in or around Detroit, uh, DC, Detroit or DC this weekend, please visit the DC Jazz Fest or Detroit Jazz Fest. And today's contender is none other than Brett Premack, also known as the Jazz Video Guy, and formerly the Jazz Instigator known as the Pariah. Brett is an award-winning filmmaker and educator and writer who now resides in Mexico. Brett, tell us about some of your latest Jazz Video Guy exploits. Well, since I moved to Mexico, I've been uh, interacting with a lot of Mexican jazz musicians. And we went down to Mexico City last weekend, and there is a thriving jazz scene in Mexico City. We heard some great music down there. So although I'm away from the United States, I'm away from New York City, which is the mecca for jazz, I'm fortunate to live in a place where people love the music and there's a lot happening. Wonderful. Well, we'll have to get you to tell us more about jazz in Mexico uh, coming up. But let's get started with our questions. And Mark is up at the plate first. Mark, name the musician whose father played the bass and the sousaphone with Harry Connick Jr., Aaron Neville, and the Preservation Hall Jazz Band. Would that be A, John Baptiste, B, Nicholas Payton, C, Perlin Riley, D, Kent Jordan, or E, Donald Harris? I'm gonna have to say uh, his name is Walter Payton. Not the football player, but the father of Nicholas Payton. That would be my guess. And Mark, you are correct. Nicholas Payton. Nicholas Payton's father, Walter Payton, played with the Preservation Hall Jazz Band, Aaron Neville, and Harry Connick Jr. And that's a 
a great illustration of how jazz is a family pursuit in New Orleans, because not only Nicholas Payton, but amongst those others possibilities, Kent Jordan and Donald Harrison are also part of jazz families. And John Batiste too. Don't yes, forget exactly, exactly. And, and, and before you move on, I gotta say, Walter Payton was one of the uh, great scholars of 19th century black music. He was amazing. Yes, he was. Brett, you're up next. Which of the following Thelonious Monk competition finalists has a father who was also a Monk competition finalist? Would that be A, Gretchen Parlato, B, Joshua Ridman, C, Gerald Clayton, D, Sharonae Wade, or E, Melissa Aldana? Wow, I do not know. So this is gonna be a guess on my part. Uh, of course, Joshua Red's, Joshua's father is Dewey Redman. I don't believe he was a uh, monk in the monk competition. Uh, Gerald Clayton's father is John Clayton. I think he was a bit too uh, advanced in years to be in the competition. Uh, Melissa Aldana's father, Melissa is from Chile. Um, so there's a chance on that. I don't know Gretchen's father and I'm unfamiliar with Charlene Wade. So I'm gonna guess Melissa Aldana. And that is correct. Melissa Aldana's father competed in the Monk competition as a saxophonist and was a finalist. That is correct. Mark, you got to look on your face as though that wouldn't have been your answer. Wow. Go, Brad. Give them, <laughs> give them the hard ones. <laughs> oh, thanks, Mark. <laughs> okay, Mark, you're up next. Saxophonist and flutist, or flautist, if you will, TK Blue was the music director for many years for which NEA jazz master? Was it A? Art Blakey, B, Abdullah Ibrahim, C, Randy Weston, D, Jimmy Scott, or E, Max Roach. Um, I just saw this musician playing uh, in the park just three weeks ago, TK Blue, um, and he worked for many years with Randy Weston. That is correct again. Yes, indeed. TK Blue. Hold on one second. We have to mention that Willard Jenkins yes, collaborated yes. with Randy Weston in his autobiography. You, you didn't oh, give me a chance, but yes, I was going to plug that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. TK Blue, who was formerly known as Talib Kibwe, and who actually changed his name because of Talib Kwele, yes. the rapper, and any, any confusion that might be there. But TK actually was Randy's music director for over 25 years. So that is correct, Mark. Brett, you're up next. Who wrote the book, Thelonious Monk, an American Original? Was that A, Her Boy, B, Stanley Crouch, C, Omiri Baraka, D, Robin D.G. Kelly, or E, Robert O'Mealy? Well, I'm going to say, I'm going to go with D, Robin D.G. Kelly. That is correct. It was Robin D.G. Kelly. So you didn't have, even have to do any ruminating over that one. It's a great book. <laughs> it's a great it book. It's a, it, it is a fabulous book. And it took him 17 years to write that book. All right, Mark, you're up next. Name the trombone player who played in an all monk band, as in the music of Thelonious Monk. Name the trombone player who played in an all monk band with Steve Lacey. Was it A, Roswell Rudd, B, Jimmy Nepper, C, Curtis Fuller, D, 
George Lewis, or E, Ray Anderson. Wow. Until I saw Ray Anderson's name up there, I thought this was easy. Um, um, I'm still going to go with Roswell Rudd. That is correct. We're batting a thousand today. It was Roswell Rudd who was performed with Steve Lacey in a band that played all Thelonious Monk music. You are correct. Jazzology is brought to you by Savage Content, an exciting new purveyor of quality music programming. From podcasts to live performances and interviews, Savage Content offers an eclectic mix of curated entertainment programming for all music lovers. Be sure to follow Savage Content on social media to hear about our latest releases. And now it's time to ask our contestant our favorite question. Savage Content has hosted two essay contests asking contestants how they fell in love with jazz. So for each episode of Jazzology, we like to pose that question to our contestants. And Britt, this is your first time on Jazzology. Tell us, how did you fall in love with jazz? Well, my dad was a musician. He was a pianist uh, during World War II. He led a USO band and backed Bob Hope. So when I was, I guess, eight or nine years old, two things happened to turn me on to jazz. One, we bought our first, our first hi-fi system and with two records. One was the soundtrack to My Fair Lady, the Broadway show. The other one was Duke Ellington plays the Nutcracker Suite. So that kind of brought me into, because I knew the Nutcracker Suite. And then the other thing was, I saw Louis Armstrong on the Ed Sullivan Show a number of times. I got really excited. I wanted to climb into the TV and be part of that. <laughs> and Mark, you've answered this question before, but tell us, Mark Ruffin, what is it about jazz that continues to stimulate you? Wow. You know, as you mentioned, I, I answered this before because I grew up in a record store. And my right. folks, they played everything. And and as I grew up, man, I loved R&B and pop and funk. But there was just something about jazz that was always deeper. It always, you know, it just always stimulated me. Um, intellectually, rhythmically, you know, dance, everything. And it's just, there's something extra about jazz music as opposed to any other kind of music. Well, thank you, Mark, and thank you, Brett. And now it's time to continue with Brett. You're up next. Brett Premack, name the famous composer, band leader, who for a short time during the mid 40s adopted the stage and recording name Baron in the spirit of the Duke of Ellington and the Count of Basie. Who was that band leader? Was it A, Charles Mingus, B, Gerald Wilson, C, Jimmy Lunsford, D, Max Roach, or E, Fletcher Henderson? Wow. Hmm. For some reason, I'm thinking Mingus. I'm going to go with A, Charles Mingus. And why are you thinking Mingus? For some reason, in my in the inner recesses of my memory, I have Baron and Mingus co-mingled. You are correct, Brett Premack. Wow. Wow. He was known for a minute as Baron Mingus. In fact, there was a reissue of some classic Mingus sides that's called Baron Mingus. There you go. I think it's a small, about like a two or three CD box set. Hmm. Wow! So we we got some champions here. This is going to be a this is a tough one today. Six to six is the score. Mark Ruffin, you ready? Mm -hmm. Earlier this year, the trumpeter Dave Douglas, who has a record label called Greenleaf Records. Earlier this year, Dave Douglas released the debut recording on his Greenleaf label of the young saxophonist, Julieta Eugenio, who was a finalist 
at this weekend's DC Jazz Festival Young Bands Competition, the DC Jazz Prix. What country is Julieta Eugenio from? Is she from A, Chile, B, Panama, C, Argentina, D, Uruguay, or E, Brazil? I'm going to go out on the limb and say that Brett doesn't know the answer to this either. <laughs> True um, that. <laughs> um, wow. I love Brazil. That's not a Brazilian name, I didn't think. You know, um, that's a hard one, man. Um, yeah, it's time to get tough on you guys. You guys are wiping us out here. So I'm I'm gonna go with maybe she's a disciple of Danilo Perez and say Panama. I wanted to say Chile, but um Ooh, Mark, that is incorrect, Mark. That mm -hmm. is incorrect. And now it's time to give Brett an opportunity to steal this point. Brett Premack, I'll repeat the question. Okay. Earlier this year. Trumpeter Dave Douglas released the debut recording on his Greenleaf label of the young saxophonist Julieta Eugenio, who was a finalist at this weekend's DC Jazz Festival Young Bands Competition known as the DC, DC Jazz Prix. What country is Julieta Eugenio from? Is she from A, Chile, B, we, we've ruled out Panama, C, Argentina, D, Uruguay, or E, Brazil. Well, I, thinking along Mark's lines, I don't see her name as being Brazilian. Uh, Panama has been ruled out. Chile, I think of Melissa Aldana. I know that jazz is very popular in Argentina, so I'm going to go with C, Argentina. Brett, you are correct. You are correct. Brett has stolen the point and stolen the lead. Julieta Eugenio is a tenor saxophonist who is a native of Argentina. And as I mentioned, she is one of the finalists in this year's DC Jazz Pre Young Bands Competition. Question, Willard, yes. what happens to the, the, uh, the entrance for that... Uh, part of the DC Jazz Festival. They get a performance, they get a contract, what happens? Oh, what what what, hap what happens is they get a, a year long relationship with DC Jazz Festival. They get a return engagement at the following year's DC Jazz Festival. They get technical assistance with their career development. Great. And that's what happens for the bands of this. All right, Brett, you're up next. Who is the jazz bassist known also as DJ Grasshopper, <laughs> who has a brother who is a masterful jazz musician as well? Is that A, Ruben Rogers, B, Bill Strickland, C, Reggie Washington, D, Christian McBride or E. William Parker? I don't, this is a total guess on my part. I, I, I don't think it's Christian because I haven't heard uh, anything about him and, and, and a brother. Uh, Reggie Washington, Bill Strickland. Can I call a friend? <laughs> <laughs> a lifeline. Lifeline. I'm going to guess. I'm going to say. I don't know. I mean, it's a it's a guess. I'm going to say Bill Strickland. Ah, that is incorrect, Brett. Now Mark has a chance to tie the score by stealing the point. Go, Mark. Go. And Mark, let me rephrase the question: Who is the jazz bassist, also known as DJ Grasshopper, who has a brother who is a masterful musician? Is that A? Ruben Rogers, B, Bill Strickland, C, 
Reggie Washington, D, Christian McBride, or E, William Parker. And we've already ruled out B, Bill Strickland. Reggie Washington is the answer. Yes, Mark Ruffin, you are Ooh, correct. Mark, yeah. Reggie, Reggie Washington's brother is Kenny Washington, the great drummer. Oh, really? And Reggie Washington appears on a compilation, a, a relatively new compilation, and, and a, a social justice compilation of recordings called Black Lives that was actually produced by Reggie's wife, Stephanie Callenbert. So look that up. Uh, uh, Willard, that record is so good. It is, I mean, it's like the future of jazz and making a statement as well. The Strickland brothers are so good on that record. It's, I'm glad you pointed it out. It's a great, great record. Yes, and you know that name, Bill Strickland, that was a ringer. <laughs> <laughs> Willard, so, give me the name of the, Willard, give me the name of that record again, please. It's simply called Black Lives. It's a two CD compilation. Came out, Blue Note released that, right, Mark? I, I don't think it was Blue Note. No, um, okay. I, I forget who released it, but it's a two CD compilation called Black Lives, and it's produced by Reggie Washington's wife, uh, who, 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 her name is Stephanie Callumbury. I mean, Jeremy Pelt, so many great folks on that record. It's a great record. Yeah, hey, absolutely. Can I ask a question? Yes. Curious what you guys think of a group that's called Jazz is Dead. <laughs> that's not a group. What is it? It's a series of encounters. Let's call them encounters between two guys, uh, one of whom was a member of a tribe called Quest, uh, between a series of encounters, production encounters between, between two guys and basically usually musicians who in some way, shape or form, jazz musicians whose work somehow influenced modern music, including hip hop. Is that, is that a correct characterization, Mark? I, I, I don't know what their motivation was, but the musicians that they pick are, are worthy musicians who, who need to be heard more. Henry Franklin and Doug Karn and Gary Bartz. Gary Bartz, yes. Now, but I'm not a fan of their music and I can say that easily but i love what they do helping people well you know you know mark i have to reflect that as well none of those records have knocked me out exactly that's right i appreciate the fact that they've engaged people like henry franklin and gary yeah. Bartz and, and gave them gigs touring exactly. i love mean, that exactly but those the records just have not knocked me out yet to be yeah. honest so mark you're up next at which of the following major international jazz festivals <clears throat> did Sting collaborate in performance with the master band leader arranger Gil Evans? Was it A, the Montreal Jazz Festival, B, the Istanbul Jazz Festival, C, the Montreux Jazz Festival, D, Umbria Jazz Festival, or E, the Cape Town International Jazz Festival. When you're champion, you just give the champion the harder question. <clears throat> um, man, I know Claude Nobbs and, and, and Gil had a great relationship in Montreal, but something tells me it's Umbria. Um, I should go with, I'm, I'm gonna go with Montreux. You gonna go with Montreux? Yeah. Ah, that's incorrect. Brett P. Premack with a chance to steal the point. Brett. First of all, pronounce Umbria. Which of the following major international jazz festivals did Sting collaborate in performance with the master band leader arranger Gil Evans? Was it A, the Montreal Jazz Festival? B, the Istanbul Jazz Festival. We've ruled out C, Montreux Jazz, D, Umbria Jazz Festival, or E, the Cape Town International Jazz Festival. 
Well, I don't know the answer, but I'm going to go with A, because I know that there are a lot of interesting collaborations that happen in Montreal. Ah, you're wrong as well. No one got that right. The correct answer to that question was D, Umbria Jazz. And I know that because I was there for that performance. <laughs> so there you have it. It was a good. We got a shout out. It was a oh, Umbria Jazz is one of the great oh, yeah. festivals for sure. And so it was, was it with the big band and Sting? It was the big band and Sting. Yes, it was with Howard, big, the big band with Howard Johnson and Lou Soloff and all those guys. Yeah. Mattis and all. It was great. So we've come back to Brent at 7 7. We got a little intrigue today. <laughs> The Brett, the late great Philadelphia born guitarist, Pat Martino's biographer was which of the following jazz writers? Was it A, Gary Giddens, B, Gene Santoro, C, Mark Myers, D, Bill Milkowski, or E, Ashley Kahn? Well, last year, Bill Milkowski wrote a great book on Michael Brecker. And several years before that, he did one on Jaco Pastorius. Uh, so I'm going to go with D, Bill Milkowski. Brett, you are correct. It was indeed Bill Milkowski who wrote the Pat Martino biography. I got to say this, man. That's the first book I ever read that was a jazz self-help book. Before my wife and I got married, I, I have her read it because that book teaches you how to live in the here and now. And that's the title of it. And if you know what happened to Pat, you, you can get an idea. But he lived in the here and now. Just an amazing book. Well, Pat Martino was a remarkable man. I guess many people don't know the fact yeah. that he uh, was an incredible player who had some brain issues. He yes. had to, he was wiped out. He had to relearn everything. Yes, and that's did. how he learned to live in the here and now. The book is incredible. Yes. All right. Well, it's time for our bonus round. And Mark will go first because Mark is in the hole. Are you ready, Mark? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mark, you don't sound very enthusiastic. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Mark Ruffin, before his stellar work as a jazz educator, composer, historian, author, and cellist, the late NEA jazz master David, Ber David Baker once excelled at which of the following instruments? Was it A, tenor saxophone, B, acoustic bass, C, trumpet, D, piano, or E, trombone? Wow. So, Brett, get ready next week uh, in two weeks because you're going to get all the really hard questions. <laughs> um, Man, I, again, just like last time, I, 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 I'm going to go with the bass. Uh, that is incorrect, Mark Ruffin. That is incorrect, and that means that Brett Premack is our new Jazzology champion. The correct answer to that question, and I'll, I'll, say read, trumpet. I'll, I'll repeat trombone. Is the correct answer is trombone. Ah. What happened with David Baker is he had a terrible accident and he was unable to continue playing a wind instrument. So he concentrated on composing, educating, and he, he eventually picked up the cello as his means of expressive music. We need to, to, to say something about David Baker here because he's someone who's kind of behind the scenes. Musicians know about him, 
But he's had a major role in jazz education. Well, he did a major yeah. role in jazz education. And just a wonderful man. He thus, put Indiana University on the map, please. And thus, he's an NEA jazz master. So, Mark Ruffin, thank you so much for joining us on Jazzology. And Brett Premack, congratulations on your win. And if anyone watching Jazzology would like to become a contestant on Jazzology, please click the link in the description below and fill out the form. You must be 18 years or older and be sure to follow us on social media at Savage CNTNT to get all the latest news and updates. Can Thanks I say for, something? Yes, please. I'm going to, I want to say that I want to do, donate my winnings this week and in any other week to the Jazz Foundation of America. I think that the work they're doing is like really important and people in our sh community should know about it and support them. So I want to donate my winnings, whatever they might be, to the Jazz Foundation of America. Well, thank you, Brett Premack. We, Joe Petricelli was, was, was killing people on this show for weeks, the director of the Jazz Foundation of America, and I'm sure he'll be very pleased to hear that. Thanks so much to both Mark Ruffin and Brett Premack and to everyone who joined us today. Remember, you can check us out every other Friday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you miss the show live, you can find the archive on the Savage Content YouTube channel. Take care. And Mark, happy Jazz Fest. We'll be having a happy one here in D.C. this weekend, that's for sure.